Thank you very much, Kelly, and good morning, everyone from APEC region. Good evening if you're from US region. So like Kelly mentioned today, I would like to talk about how to use Tapestry platform to perform multiomics analysis of SNV, CMV, and protein sequencing from thousands of single cells. Just a brief overview of the agenda today. First, I would like to give a brief uh, history of our company and why do we want to use single cell. Um, and uh, I, next, I would like to talk about um, two custom publications uh, and share the data with you focusing on therapeutic resistance and MRD studies. Finally, and most importantly, I would like to share our current progression on single cell omics, multi-omics study. Just a little bit back um, history of, about our company. Um, back in 2017, we launched the first single cell genomics platform called Tapestry. Uh, we often get the question that how we are different from other single cell companies in the industry. And the answer is that we mainly focus on single cell DNA. And we were the industry first single cell targeted DNA sequencing platform with <clears throat> several catalog panels being offered targeting both heme and solid tumor space. In 2018, we launched Tapestry Designer, which really unlocked the potential for custom panel designs for high impact applications, including CRISPR screening and mouse studies. And the major interest using our platform lies in translational and clinical research. And more recently in 2019, we are hard at work to, to launch the industry first DNA focused uh, multiomics platform. And uh, in here, we combine the information of both DNA and protein at the same single cell level so that allow customer to analyze genotype and phenotype at the same time. This really launched us into preclinical and biomarker space. With single cell DNA at our core, we're really excited to drive the uh, tapestry platform into multi-omics space. So why single cell DNA and what's the benefit, especially in cancer research? The current population, uh, popular method to understand cancer genetics is bulk sequencing. However, this approach does have several limitations. First, the conventional population average approach failed to resolve potential minor population, but those rare cells or small clones sometimes could be very important and informative um, for clinicians to make relevant intervention. And second, it fails to resolve the subpopulation makeup in the highly heterogeneous cancer sample, both blood and solid tumor. And in bulk sequencing, again, population averaging may just obscure the important biological information and usually very true for single cell, um, single cell genomics analysis of a diverse heterogeneous tumors. In a recent review that just came out of Nick Naveen's group at MD Anderson, he reviewed for the first time how single cell genomic sequencing can be potentially applied to the clinics and he talked about all those applications from DNA to RNA to epigenetics. But today I really want to focus on how single cell DNA can be especially used in your clinical research. Uh, on the right graph, it has a, this nice summary of the four categories that you can use single cell DNA sequencing to generate. At first, uh, single cell DNA sequencing technology can help you to resolve different clones from a mixed population. And based on their mutation acquisition order, further, you could even construct phylogenetic trees to better understand tumor evolution. And if you're studying with longitudinal samples or uh, different spatial samples, you could also construct fish plots to better understand the clonal size change at different time point or different space in the same patient. And lastly, also very importantly, using single cell DNA, you're able to resolve the mutational corpus pattern and even resolve the zygosity uh, of each mutation. Again, I uh, just want to show a list of specs that showcase tapestry platforms capability. As the industry's only platform that analyze single cell DNA and protein at the same level, our platform also allows 
uh, our platform allows assaying up to hundreds of targeted loci for DNA analysis. And we also allow analysis of CNVs at both gene and chromosome level. And our high throughput allow you to analyze up to 10,000 cells uh, at the same time. And the, moreover, um, the high sensitivity allow you to detect down to 0.1% of these subclones. For the assay that we offer, we offer both catalog panels and custom panels that I will talk about in a second. Um, compatible with single cell suspensions. If you're studying with solid tumor, it is also compatible with single nuclei in input. At Mission Bio, we truly offer end-to-end -end solution from, custom, uh, from our instrument, the assays that we offer, including catalog panel and custom panels, as well as cartridges. Um, and we also help you with data analysis. And our workflow is truly um, built um, seamlessly with the Illumina NGS workflow. Um, so um, it, uh, using our tapestry platform, you can generate library that can be directly used on Illumina sequencers. And the FASTQ output file you get from the Illumina sequencers can directly be plugged into our so, uh, software for data visualization and data analysis. And now let's just talk about the key technology uh, inside of the instrument. As a microfluidic based single cell platform, Tapestry deploy a uniquely powerful two-step microfluid process to capture single cell DNA content and reactions into single oil droplets. And the first step is cell encapsulation. This step capt um, captures cells and proteas into single oil droplets followed by protein digestion on the dermocycler. And this step is really important in terms that it helps to you to gain access to the chromatin DNA sequence. And this step really sets us success for the downstream target PCR reaction. And the second step is barcoding, where we merge the cell lysates, the barcoding beads and reaction mix into another oil droplet through microfluid channels. And the reaction mix will be captured into a picoliter droplet for targeted PCR reaction. And to analyze protein, we simply incorporate a um, antibody staining step upstream of the whole workflow, which I will talk about in my last session. And in terms of the panel that we offer, we offer a wealth of catalog panels to get you started in both heme and uh, solid tumor space. And we also offer custom design software, uh, Tapestry Designer, that help you to design custom panels. If you're, for example, interested in studying rare genotypes or you're working in a gene editing field. And on average, our panels allows 100 to 3, 000, uh, 3, sorry, 300 amplicons uh, in each panel. But we have worked with more than 1,000 amplicons uh, for our custom panel. And here are just, again, some specs for our catalog panels to have you, uh, give you an idea of the panel that target different genes and how many amplicons included. One thing I really would like to point out is that, as you can see, that our catalog panel have really good panel uniformity. That means that this could significantly reduce your sequencing cost to recover those low performance amplicons. And our sequencing recommendation is 60 to 80x coverage per cell per amplicon. And actually, because we're using targeting method, it's not really a huge of sequencing cost that you will need. And we recommend, again, sequencing on Illumina platform with 2 by 150 base pair parent sequencing. And uh, lastly, we offer a whole suite solutions uh, for you to perform analysis as well uh, from automated panel design using Tapestry Designer primary data analysis using Tapestry Pipeline, all the way to secondary data visualization using Tapestry Insights. And lastly, I would really like to highlight some of our publications. Uh, back in 2008 and 2000, uh, 2018 and 2019, we had our first five publications that came out. Um, and as you can see that our application expands in both heme and the solid tumor. 
space. And the study focused on therapeutic resistance, clonal uh, remodeling after patients get bone marrow transplantation. And already in 2020, we have five new publications in Blood and Blood Advances Journal. And we also have five plus publication in the preprints as well. And the research topic also really expanded into MRD detection, biopharma drug studies, modiomic studies, uh, and also even gene editing research. Without any further ado, I'd like to dive into our custom user case. First, I would really like to share a very recent publication that highlight our collaboration with biopharma Agios. This study is to study a therapeutic resistance for a drug that they have made ivastinib. So at IDH1 mutations occur in six to 10% of the patients and Agio makes this drug that's um, IDH1 inhibitor uh, that has been approved by FDA back in 2018 to treat patients with relapsed refractory AML. And in the follow-up study uh, that reported in a journal public, uh, published in 2018, they identified patients that developed resistance to this drug. And we really like to look at the molecular mechanism that underlies the uh, resistance and relapse in the subsets of the population that didn't really respond to ivostinib uh, model treatment. So first, I really would like to show you a genetic uh, landscape of those 174 patients that they have selected for this study. Uh, note that this uh, genetic landscape is using the data from the bulk sequencing. So as you can see here that the patients are listed from left to right based on their response to this drug from best to worst. And on the uh, y-axis, you have all the different mutations listed from top to bottom, and they are categorized into different sections based on their functionality. And as you can see here that the mean number of the mutations uh, tells you that the genomic complexity uh, really is associated with uh, the uh, different incomes of the patient. And the more complex the genomic mutations is mostly associated with the worst outcome. And similar to other groups finding, the mutations mainly located on the RTK pathway. Um, uh, um, and lastly, also very importantly, uh, Agios really would like to understand the cohort that acquired IDH2 mutations because it plays a redundant role to IDH1 in the oncogenesis pathway and really could account for the ivastinib resistance and relapse. Um, so uh, moreover, Argios actually has a drug that uh, serves as a IDH2 inhibitor and could be potentially used in those relapse instances. So as you can see here that they have identified patients that had both IDH1 and IDH2 mutations. However, whether those mutations occur in the same single cell level is not known by bulk sequencing. As such, they turn to uh, tapestry for help um, to better understand the clonal architecture heterogeneity at a, at a higher resolution so that patient can understand better. Uh, and as you can see here that they picked the nine patients and six out of nine patients uh, have developed resistance after they acquire IDH2 mutations at different uh, single cell. Uh, and some of the patient uh, at the same single cell along with the uh, IDH1 along with uh, an APM1 and FLI3 mutation. And some of group of the patient acquired IDH2, but at different single cell level. And lastly, they also identified some patient even already had IDH2 mutation at baseline level and they expanded um, at different cells and expanded during relapse. A second user case I would really like to highlight is a study that we collaborated with Dr. Ravi Majedi's group. Uh, and this paper is also recently came out of uh, during 2020. Um, and um, uh, the study was um, in collaboration with their group from Stanford. Uh, in this study, um, they would really like to explore the potential usage of tapestry platform in MRD study. As we all know that the current popular method to detect MRD is fax PCR, qPCR. However, tapestry does have the advantage to elucidate 
clonal architecture. And moreover, it can distinguish different clonal relationships, for example, CHIP and MRD. I will talk about that later. And in this study, they selected 14 patients at three different time points. And the key question they would really to like to answer here is, can the patterns of MRD and clonal evolution be detected by using tapestry single cell sequencing platform? Uh, so here I would like to show three different patient patterns. And the first, uh, they were able to detect it using uh, tapestry single cell DNA sequencing platform. And the first, as you can see, is a very typical disease relapse model that the patient holds the same pathogenic clone at um, baseline and relapse. And the second one, the patient uh, had a clonal switch event where they had different clones at their diagnosis and relapse stage. And the third patient, very interestingly, they had a more complex situation that they had both CHIP and MRD. And um, our platform, uh, Tapestry, was able to distinguish between those two um, and uh, uh, help better understand this uh, patient's clonal uh, diversity. And in the end, uh, this is how he imagined using single cell sequencing technology uh, can potentially help with future MRD study. Uh, basically, the patient after single cell sequencing, um, may, this may allow clinicians based on their clonal diversity, this allows clinicians to um, better stratify the patient based on their clonal diversity. For example, a patient with decreased clonal diversity at remission may be associated with longer relapse-free um, survival. And moreover, the detection of MRD would be very, very important uh, for the clinician to make the call to escalate or de-escalate, um, and even in clinical trials. And lastly, because uh, I don't really have time here, I just would like to point out that um, based on, uh, although I highlight him publication here, we uh, Tapestry platform also has the capability of using single cell nuclei, single nuclei as input. And we do offer a universal nuclei extraction protocol that can be downloaded from our website. And we have tested with various uh, tissue types, including frozen um, fresh samples and OCT embedded, and the, all of them have really good performance and cell output. Lastly, and most importantly, I would really like to talk about our recent advances in the multi-omic space. In 2019, um, single cell multi-omic uh, has been voted as the nature method of the year, and re that's really coincident with uh, Mission Bio's um, um, roadmap as well. So at first we launched a CMV analysis in mid 2019. Using our targeted approach to detect um, CMV using both read and genotype, uh, we really gained the advantage of lowering the sequencing cost, but with a high resolution comparing the traditional single cell genome amplification method. And moreover, using our platform, you could detect CMV and SNV at the same cell level. We did a cell mixing study to, uh, to, um, to uh, de uh, further apply our, um, to better understand our method. And as you can see here that we mixed uh, four different cell type with different genetic background and uh, using tapestry uh, and the sequence them using tapestry platform. And we were able to distinguish those four different cell lines just based on their copy number gain and loss, even if Raji and Jerka had only single um, CMV difference. And translated into a TSNI plot, as you can see here, that the four different cell lines were able to be distinguished, uh, and we colored them actually on this, um, based on their SNV. Uh, and uh, on the right-hand side, we are um, also able to detect the SNVs of the four different cell lines. And moreover, we can detect their uh, zygosity status for different mutations as well. And we then launched protein analysis capability later on 2019. And great news is that we collaborate with BioLegend on, we're going to um, collaborate with BioLegend on distributing antibody panels for protein detection. And right now, we are the commercially um, available, only available single cell platform that uncovers SNVs, CNVs, and protein expression from the same single cell level. And um, 
we uh, and currently the BioLegend team um, currently we distribute our uh, antibody as well. But once BioLegend comes on board, we'll be able to offer panels that allow multiplex up to 40 plus antibodies for cell surface protein expression. And as we mentioned earlier, um, the whole workflow just has a small modification, including a simple antibody staining step up front of your whole workflow. And why do we want to do multiomic study? This is just a graph demonstrating that uh, especially, this is especially true for AML research. Um, as you can see here, AML is a cancer that evolves from uncontrolled proliferation from an undifferentiated my, uh, myeloid lineage cells that acquire sequential mutations and involves different cell types and different mutation acquisitions. So using multi-omic studies, it really helps us to understand, better understand how AML progresses. Um, Dr. Uh, Ross Levine, uh, one of our key opinion leaders in um, MSKCC, he definitely utilized this, um, our uh, newly, newest feature, uh, doing multi-omics research to study AML patient. And he actually already have this paper in print print available and recently it got accepted. In this study, he profiled 123 patients using single cell mutation and protein analysis. And the whole study uh, includes seven protein targets uh, along with 109 DNA amplicons, uh, which is a custom panel that we built for him. And in this study, he really would like to understand um, the order of the mutation acquisition in the AML patient and how these uh, mutations correlate with different cell protein expression. Um, and really, I would like to show you, highlight this multiomic approach uh, that he used to understand the AML patient progression. Uh, so here is that example that he was able to, um, uh, he was able to um, determine different clusters of the one, one of the patient's sample based on their genotypes. Um, and as you can see, after he overlay the protein expression of CD11B uh, and the high expression level of CD11B in this cluster is strongly associated with uh, genotype uh, cluster with uh, RAS mutations. Lastly, um, to summarize, using Tapestry platform well, with our first and only platform um, as the first and only platform to co-detect SNV, CNV, and protein at the same time in single cell, we are able to um, help the researchers to better understand uh, both genotypes and phenotype at the same time. And the whole workflow only has a very simple cell staining protocol up uh, front of the whole tapestry workflow. And we have validated our multi-omics research both on cell lines as well as primary patient samples. And thank you for the um, webinar today. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Hi, Yue. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Kelly. So we do have a few questions that are coming in. And also, we love to hear uh, questions. And we encourage you to use the chat or the Q&A box. And uh, UA will So first question, does the platform work with mouse samples? Great question. Yes. So we actually recently launched our Tapestry platform, uh, Tapestry Designer 2.0 that help you even design custom panels based on mouse genome. And we also had a case study that um, you can download on our website uh, we, where we worked on mouse model in collaboration with Dr. John Lee from UCSF. So if you're interested in working with mouse model, the answer is absolutely yes. Oh, great. Another question, I think it's technical. How many cells do you need uh, per sample? Yeah, great question. Um, so 
it really, um, so for our um, hard um, threshold for the cell number that you need to put on our cartridge uh, is at least 100,000. Um, and, uh, but if you are working with, um, for example, you're in, you only interested in studying single cell DNA, then we recommend you start at least 500,000 samples because uh, our workflow does involve, you know, cell washings. So you could probably lose some cells uh, before you even load the, the cells on the cartridge. Um, and the, but if you're interested in doing, you know, single cell DNA as well as protein studies, we do have a higher cell number recommendations um, up to 2 million, uh, but 1 million optimal. Um, so because as we mentioned in this slide that we have a um, cell staining protocol that does um, that the, when you perform it, you do lose some, some of the cells um, during this process. Great. Uh, another technical question. How are the cells encapsulated? A great question. So like I mentioned uh, during our early slide, we have this novel two-step cell encapsulation protocol. I can read um, route to my slide. So we do have this novel two-step cell encapsulation step. Uh, the first step is to, uh, and the first thing first is that we are a microfluidic based um, single cell platform. So we capture cells into oil droplets. Uh, and uh, we have this novel two-step. First step is to encapsulate cells into oil droplet. And second step to encapsulate barcoding mix and reagent mix along with cell lysis into another oil droplet. Another technical question. Um, what viability do you need your cells at? Uh, they know that it's important for RNA-seq. How does it correlate for DNA-seq? Yeah, great question, Kelly. So as um, we talk about working with DNA, you do have the advantage working with a relatively stable genetic material. So we recommend 80% uh, viability. However, we have worked with even less than 20% cell viability and it has excellent performance, high cell throughput, high panel uniformity. So it really depends. Um, although, like I mentioned, we recommend 80%, but if you really have good cell integrity, although it has a, cell, a low cell viability, we can still work with that. Great. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, UA, thank you so much for giving a wonderful seminar. And if anyone has additional questions that they think of after the webinar, please feel free to email us. Um, hope you, everyone has a great day. And thank you so much, UA. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Uh, good, good day.